What's going on everybody? We are getting back into this bad boy right here. So the DDM4 V7 that I bought a couple of months ago, you haven't seen my original video on that, I will link it down below for you. So I love me some Daniel Defense, and I said that in that video as well. And I'm curious to know, do you like Daniel Defense as well or not? And let me know why. However, I got this thing, bought it with my own money because I wanted to make this thing just one of my go-to setups, one of my sweet honeys, I guess, as you would say out there. But there were a couple things that just kind of right off the bat uh, caught my attention. There were things that I had not experienced with other Daniel Defense setups in my history, either in the military, law enforcement, or just my own personal stuff. Because like I said, I've owned a bunch of Daniel Defense stuff over the years. I've gotten rid of some of it. I've held on to others. Now, there were really three main things that kind of caught my attention. One was it's overgassed. I mean, it's like, it's gassy. Uh, number two, literally a terrible trigger right out of the factory. It felt like some weird two-stagey, gritty, grindy mil-spec trigger, which if you, if you like mil-spec, whatever. If you don't like mil-spec, do whatever you want. But it was, it was gnarly right out of the box. The third thing was going to be the safety selector. So it had a mil-spec style safety selector that was ambi, it was 90 degree. It was very protruded. It just it just didn't work out. Um, originally, I thought it came with a off-handed stubby side, which is totally doable, or a 45 degree, which is even better. And that's a very personal thing. So before we go any further, and I'm probably gonna say this more than once, none of this stuff is mandatory. This rifle is gonna give you years of service and is gonna be plenty fine out there. These are just things that I tuned this in the way I wanted it because of how I've built everything else and just what I am used to. Well, that being said, that trigger was trash. And like I said, she was gassy, like hashtag fed all the beans. And now that you know kind of the history and what I was thinking with this, let's go ahead and get into this thing and we're gonna check it out and see everything that I have done to it. And then talk about that range footage and how this thing is running down now and if there's anything I'm gonna change in the future. This is your guys' first time here. Consider subscribing and turning those bell notification icons on. If you like anything that's going on here, give the video a thumbs up. We are gonna get into this Daniel Defense right now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and knock out the DDM4 V7 update here to talk about the parts I put on here to make this my sweet, sweet honey once again. So I know people are probably already freaking out in the comments. There's nothing wrong with the Daniel Defense rifle out of the box. It's a solid setup for most people. I wanted to tune this a little better and put some things in it to make it, I guess, kind of more of what I thought it should be out of the box. Let's start with the lower. Uh, the first thing here, uh, besides that trigger you're gonna notice is that Radian Raptor safety. So that is uh, ambi. It's got one side is stubby, the other side is full length. Those are interchangeable. You can have it at a 45 or you can have it at a full 90. That is all up to you. If you're a lefty, you swap the stubby side over and you're good to go. The reason I changed this was because the safety that was on here was the standard mil spec style, but an ambi. And every time I went to activate it, I would either hit my knuckle because it was so long and so far out, or it would literally just bury the web of my hand underneath the safety. So uh, the fact that it wasn't a 45 or it didn't have a one side stubby, just it kind of baffled me. And maybe it's just because parts are hard to get right now but great safety. Um, one of my favorites, actually it is my favorite. I've got like seven of these on different builds. I'll leave a link for all the stuff down below if you guys are interested, but my personal favorite, easy to install. The next thing is going to be that DH3 trigger from Timney. Now I did a full video on this. That thing is nothing short of amazing. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is a two stage adjustable. So that is stage numero uno. And then, oh my God, there it goes. <laughs> so. You can adjust this from like one and a half to three pounds. One and a half is way too light for me. So I went to just over two. I want to say it's it's just about two and a quarter, maybe two pounds, four ounces. But uh, it is feather light, amazing, uh, absolutely amazing. So let's go ahead and do some pulls on this real quick so you guys can see what that trigger is pulling at because it is great. Not the cheapest thing out there, but it is absolutely amazing. So we are on that one just a hair over two pounds right there so almost exactly two pounds and i pull low on the trigger because i've had to explain this before it's all about leverage people uh, work the leverage of your trigger the lower you get the better leverage you have uh, you can see right there i mean two pounds two ounces amazing trigger feels great timney did a bang up job on this like i said i have a full review i will leave it linked down below if i remember not the cheapest thing in the world but amazing 
So you'll notice right there that that buffer right there says H2 on it. So it's the factory spring in there, but I did move to a heavier buffer to calm that recoil impulse down. A recoil impulse on ARs 5.56223 is not much, but most of my other direct impingement rifles were far more calm than this thing. So the gas port in this thing is over drilled. We'll talk more about that in a minute. So the buffer helps slow everything down, helps add some mass in there for when that bolt's going back and forth. So it doesn't have that, you know, that, that felt recoil as much as it did from the factory. I did try an H3, but when I combined the H3 with the brake we're going to talk about now was a little bit much. I was getting bad ejections, uh, or not bad ejections. They were coming out, but it was really light on the ejection pattern. So up here, one of my favorite brakes, and I tell a lot of people to get this one, the VG6 uh, Gamma, the 5.56. It's a great brake. Um, you know, you've got all the ports you need up across the top, those big ports on the side, and then more gas portings on there. These are kind of like the hybrid comp brake designs. Uh, these things are great. Um, the person to the left and right of you are gonna hate you <laughs> because of the concussion that thing puts out but it really does a lot to calm these things down and really keep that muzzle level for those follow-up shots. They're, they're pretty cheap. I mean, you can, they have sales on them from time to time. You can get them for like 69 bucks, but I wanna say regularly they're like maybe $79. So not bad and it does, it, it adds the finishing touch once you figure out what buffer weight you wanna use. So talking about that, the gas system in here. So Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I want to say spec on gas ports is like 07, like, you know, 70 thousandths to like 0 0.0 or 83. So 83 thousandths or something like that. Uh, this thing was, was way hot. So definitely way hot. And I've got a test group of three of these. So two of my friends bought these and all had to do the same stuff to really bring it down. What does that mean? That means it'll pretty much run anything. That means you stick a can on this thing, you know, a suppressor, it's going to run good means you can run terrible ammo and if you don't clean your setups you can probably run ammo for days and they won't lock up what that does mean you're going to feel the recoil a little bit more so quickly talking about everything else i have on here because like i said i bought this to be one of my go-to's or basically my one of my favorite setups because i love daniel defense stuff like i've said before maybe that's confirmation bias but i set this up as if i was going to use this every single day I've got my mod light, my mod switch, my Surefire double lot tail cap on there. That is an absolutely insane light. And I've got reviews on almost all this stuff. The Troy folding battle sights have been some of my favorites for, you know, well over a decade since, you know, since I was in the military. Uh, all good stuff there. Midwest Industries barricade stop. Okay, you don't need tons of stuff on the end of your four rail here. Get what you need, what you think you're going to use and don't just, I mean, it doesn't need to look like a gypsy yard sale all over your rail. Um, coming back from there, the Trigicon MRO. We all know that is a great durable optic. I do have the ADM quick release mount on there. It's a great mount. Uh, gives it a solid height. You can lower one third. You can get whatever you need, whatever you want to run. But that's the one I went with. And then this one has the Radian Raptor charging handle on it. And this is done so unless i decide to change an optic on here and i do have the uh troy industries ambi release right there so unless i really ch choose to change an optic or something this is how this rifle is going to stay because this is everything i want this to be at this point unless i want to change the brake on here so i can run one of my cans on it but at this point this thing is dialed in it's the way i want it the only other thing i'm going to try is one of these springs, and this is from a company that I've been talking to for a while, Blackout Defense. They've come out with some really nice stuff from triggers to full rifles. This is a spring for carbines. It's got a little bit higher of a K rating. So the K rating is like a Newton meter measurement of how the spring uh, tension is and how it collapses and how it rebounds. Uh, you can look all that stuff up, but this is probably gonna be the final touch to really tune this in to make sure that this thing is the fastest and best that it can be. That all being said, none of this is necessary. These are all options, so people don't freak out. If you've got a bone stock Daniel, it is a great gun. This is just tuned in with the parts how I want it. So let's talk about that range footage. Let's talk about what else I have learned here. 
and let's maybe compare a little bit of the recoil impulse on some of my other rifles with this one. As you can see, a few changes there from the safety selector to tuning that gas system a little bit and just overall the way I've built this because pretty much couldn't stay the way it is right now. Uh, with everything that's been done to this, it is a dramatic difference both in feel, felt recoil impulse, and how it runs out there on the range. Now, as far as the trigger and some of these parts go, if you wanna look up that Tim DH3 trigger, I've got a video on that. I'll leave it linked below. That thing is pure sex. It's great out there, especially if you're into two stage triggers. I still like single stage triggers a little bit better, but that thing off the charts. Ambi safety selector was a very nice change, especially if you've got bigger hands and you're real high up on that grip. It's gonna help you alleviate any issues with turning on, turning off, or catching skin under that like monstrous sized ambi 90 degree safety that was on there and that part doesn't really break the bank now getting into that gas system i tried the original h1 with the brake calmed it down a little bit that vg6 is outstanding if you're looking for a just dedicated comp brake that is a very good one to go with i then tried it with an h2 and i tried it with an h3 so right up around here i'm going to throw a picture of ejection patterns so with an H3 and that brake, it was a little, uh, it was a little out of where it should have been. So it was getting that soft out of spec kind of ejection pattern, which isn't necessarily mean it's ejecting soft or not pulling it out. It's just a sign. It's something to look for. So like I kind of showed up close, I'm going to try the H2, that brake and that new spring that I got and see if that really just puts it in that sweet spot. So with everything that I had done, of course, I ran that sweet, sweet tool ammo steel that I've got a bunch of still brass and self-defense stuff, ran all of them absolutely fine. Now, as far as everything else goes on here, from the lights to the Troy battle sites to the Trigicon MRO, the ADM mount, those are all personal preference items. Again, none of this stuff is mandatory. This is just how I wanted to tune this rifle in for my liking. This may provide a kind of a roadmap or a footprint for you to follow. Always double check everything that you're putting on your rifle. And of course, if you can't do it, go to an armor, go to a Smith, somebody that can do all of that stuff for you especially if you have adjustable things like adjustable gas blocks, adjustable triggers. You need to know what you are doing out there if you are putting parts like that on your setup. I can't stress that enough. Uh, again, so the Daniel Defense Rifle, you are gonna get, even in its factory form, years of service out of this thing. None of this stuff is mandatory. These are all options. You can just fine tune that rifle a little bit more. If you're kind of used to what I am, which is where you've got a very soft shooting setup, yet it's very reliable and you can run it and you've got a really nice trigger in there, just makes it really nice. Now, all that being said, let's talk about the price of these things up front. These are running anywhere right now from I think like 1500 to a little over two grand, depending on the model and depending on what you can even find out there right now. So talking about these rifles, my confirmation bias is going to come in. Like I said, I love me some Daniel Defense. I'm willing to spend a little bit extra money on it because I trust that name, I like that name, I know even down to the quality of the small parts, they pay a lot of attention. Do I think Daniel Defense Rifles are maybe a little bit overpriced? Compared to other things in the market, maybe at the same level, it's possible. Again, I'm just telling you flat out, I have confirmation bias here, which is why I was not gonna let this thing win, and I was gonna tune it into the way I want because this is gonna be one of my main go-to setups out there. And that's exactly what I bought it for. I wanted to build this as a go-to rig that I could use for any circumstance and just run and run and run and not have to worry about things going bad on me. And with all that said, that is what I have for you all today. I hope you liked learning about the DDM4 V7 or at least seeing what I have done with this to make this one of my sweet honey go-tos because I may have like three or I may have five or more. I'm not gonna tell you guys. Either way, it's a great setup, whether you leave it stock or whether you tune it in, you're just gonna pay a little bit more money for that name. You guys get out there, enjoy some range time, conserve that ammo. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready, and I will see you guys on the next one.